to the bogeyman, from the dragons of legend to the creature from the black lagoon, monsters have haunted the human imagination, going bump in our night. It's almost as though we needed monsters, those metaphors for death, as aphrodisiacs for life, to unite us in our common struggle against the implacable fates. It's strange to see how monsters change with the fashions. Carl Sagan speculates that the mythic dragon, common to so many cultures, may be a race memory of the giant reptiles, the dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus rex. Certainly the monsters in Japan's post-war movies, the great Godzillas who are awakened from ancient slumbers by nuclear tests, whereupon they trample over Tokyo, are clearly echoes of the nightmares of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In medieval times, the Holy Mother Church confronted a timid peasantry, the apparition of the devil, while the skeleton with the scythe and hourglass reminded man how human life was harvested in reoccurring plagues. And what better image of a parasitic aristocracy than the blood-sucking Count Dracula? In modern times, as we began to wonder just where medicine and science might be taking us, we saw the birth of Dr. Frankenstein's monster, of Jekyll and Hyde. Technological anxieties gave us the relentless robot, while Cold War fears filled our skies with flying saucers and intergalactic ghastlies that, impervious to our weapons, could only be destroyed by a combination of prayer and the common cold. Now meet the most venerable monster in the English language from the most enduring Anglo-Saxon myth. Grendel, that featured player in our nightmares since the 5th century. Grendel, whose story has been told and retold in every era. Grendel, ancient monster, child of a more monstrous mother, who had emerged from his cave to terrorise the little kingdom of good King Hrothgar, devouring his subjects and killing his bravest warriors. Until his majesty called in the help of the mighty hero, Beowulf. Beowulf, who would fulfil a prophecy by cutting off the monster's arm and leaving him to die beneath the stars. Our version of Grendel is seen through 20th century eyes, when perhaps we're a little suspicious of the military hero and more inclined to see humanity in a monster. For Grendel, ancient Grendel, who has watched human society developing, growing more complex as it invented things like politics, religion and art, is deserving of our sympathy and our thanks. For without our monsters, our misunderstood monsters, who are, after all, only doing their job, which is to stimulate our imaginations and encourage social cohesion, we wouldn't be in the civilised mess we are today. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with pride that we introduce the lonely, lovable monster who has been living and dying for 15 centuries with our very best interests at heart. <coughs> What's up? Oh, looks like they've just seen the Great Boogie. <laughs> <laughs> great Boogie? There's no such thing. Oh, I. No, it's just superstitious hobble-gobble. Oh, you really understand things. That's why I'm your king. Your mother loves 
every hair, every skin, every tooth, name, fame, and glory.
Mother? Ah, I'm home, Mother. Where are you, dear? In your pit? Oh, I've got some nice legs for you. Uh, now, don't... Oh, you don't smell any better, do you? Uh, don't gobble them up and get indigestion. Would you like me to talk to you for a while, dear? Oh, I know you can't understand me, but I think you like it when I talk to you, don't you? I, I dropped in on the king last night. I, I don't think you've seen their great mead hall, have you? Yeah, quite interesting, architecturally. Makes me wonder sometimes why we put up with this stinking cave. I wouldn't get you to move, though, would I, Mother? Anyway, I smashed the door down again and grabbed a couple of the closest warriors. <laughs> Lucky that. It's always the lovely plump ones who aren't fast enough to get away. Oh, the shouting and the screaming and the praying. Oh, very satisfying. <laughs> fun and games, Mummy, fun and games. Yes, fun and games. When I was a young sprout, I played games all the time. Explored this cave, every bit of it, while you were asleep, of course. I remember the first time I found my way out through the pool of fire snakes. <laughs> I didn't go very far. Not that first night, but after, ooh, other times, I played my way out farther and farther into the night and into the world and marveled at the cold mechanics of the stars. Dark chasms, seize me, seize me to your dark, foul, black bowels and crush my bones. Missed me. <laughs> Grenouille au naturel. No wonder these little leaping amphibians enjoy a certain mm, gastronomical reputation. Looking thing, isn't it? What would you say it was, Wiggler? Well, I think it's a growth of some kind, King. Some beast like fungus. Yeah, there's sap running all over. Mm. Yee, it's just like blood. Well, I'd say that tree's a goner. Ah. Uh, well, maybe we could try to cut the fungus out. Nay, nah, could be it's some kind of oak tree spirit. Better not mess with it. Aye, right, that's it. King's right. It's a spirit. Do you think so, Dung? Positive. I think we should make friends with it. Oh. Give it something to eat. Well, what's it eat? Uh, pig. Oak tree spirits eat pig. Get it a pig, Wiggler. Get it a pig? Ooh. Bloody hell. Mm. It's gone mad. Mm. Where's me axe? Mm. Mind me foot. Oh, I never did like religion. Ma. Spears at the ready. Oh. Mama! What's that? Ah, the great bogey. The great bogey? That we don't believe in. Shut up. Stand your ground, lads. Stand your ground. Oh, you stabbed me foot. Oh, sorry. Mama! Bloody hell. Oh. Retreat, lads. Retreat. You're not a bear, 
Gordon. Eh? What's that then? You're in my bear trap. There's some big ones in these parts. I've seen them prowling the slopes. Who are you then? I'm Unferth. <laughs> well, get me out then, Unferth. Why? Why? I'm the king, that's why. Not my king. Listen, when my lads hear about this, they'll have your marbles quick smart. <laughs> Lots have tried that. Think you can look after yourself then? No, I can. You build a good bear pit. Thanks. Listen, uh, I could be your king, Unferth. You'd be better off if I was your king. Oh. Uh, well, I, uh, I need someone like you who can look after himself. You could be my two I see. Haven't you got a two I see? Well, uh, I've got Wiglaf. He's all right, man, but uh, a bit accident prone. He wouldn't mind being number three, and you could be number two. I don't need to be a two I see. I'm a one I see already. Who are you in charge of, then? Me. Oh, one in charge of one isn't much. <laughs> uh, look, I've got a nice little kingdom started, expanding too. And I'm not getting any younger on first. One day, my boy, it could all be yours. Can I have that in writing? Oh, now, is that any way to start? Great bogey, you can trust your king. The king's word is law. The king's word is he's bond. The king does All right. Just remember that, though, or I'll have your royal marbles. <sighs> You've made a wise decision, on Firth. You won't regret it. You have the undying gratitude of your king. Christmas! What happened to you two, then? He surprised us, didn't he? I had us capture before we knew aught else. But there's two of you. Yes, but I've got a sore foot. That orc tree spirit. It thumped me. Dung's been touched by religion. <laughs> oh, shut your face or you'll be touched by royalty and all. Luckily for you two, Unferth's on our side now. He's our second in command. But that's me. I'm second in command. You've just been promoted to third in command. Hey, does that mean I get to be fourth in command now, then? No, don't. You're still eleven. But there aren't eleven of us, are there? there? Might be one day. Oh, I never thought of that. Yeah, that was the first time I came across those strange little creatures. Men. <laughs> A bit like us, really, weren't they, Mother? In a grotesque sort of way, that is. They had a language, too, just as I have. And maybe Mother had, a long time ago. And, oh, very strange, this. I understood them, though they didn't seem to be able to understand me. Nervy, silly little creatures they were. But uh, just the same, I knew I'd have to watch them. And just where are you off to, brother? Piss off. Piss off, is it? Who do you think you are, then? I'm Wigluff. I'm with the king and his lads. So don't mess with me, son. The king, is it? You know any king in these parts, Basil? No, Arthur. No king in these parts. That's all you yobbles know. Push off or I'll have you. Push off or he'll have us, Basil. <laughs> oh, ouch. Oh. <coughs> oh, ow. <coughs> oh, ah. <coughs> ah, you... King, somebody's done Wiglaf. Bloody hell. Who did that to you, Wiglaf? Come on, lads. Must be them. Let's do them. Nay, nee, son. What's that? Nay, nee, son. Nay, nee, son. It, it's your king you're ordering about. Sorry, king. <sighs> Off you go, then. Well, I. What did you have in mind? Wait until they start eating. It'll take them longer to get to their swords. Uh, well, I meant that, of course. I wasn't about to just... No! Oh, no! Good lads. Good boots, those. And I'll have that 
sort. Hey, you sucks. That showed him. You know, I think I've done my knee. Let's go and have a goblin. Been proud to see us wiggle off, lad. Hey, right proud we did for you, son. Aye, uh, it was a grand battle, wasn't it, Umfirth? Right grand. Pity we haven't got singer, really. A what? A singer. To sing grand songs of our battles. The songs of the hero. Number two's right. We need a singer. Dung. Aye. You can be singer then. Marbles? Me a singer? Aye. Aye. Oh. Get a song then, lad. Well, this feller he shoved his sword into our wiglaff, he did. Oh, this feller he shoved his sword into our wiglaff. So. We've done him. Call that singing? Great Dunham? Ah, right. Well, sing your own bloody songs, then. <coughs> Here, bloody hell. Here, somebody's pinched our pigs. Must be those lads on the next hill. I hope. Well, Dunham? So it went. Little groups of these men, ragged little bands, roamed the forest all through that year, fighting at every chance. And all through the next year, and the next, they killed cows, they killed horses, they killed <laughs> each other. I would listen to their noise, secretly watch their battles. I began to be more um, amused than frightened by them. It didn't matter to me what they did to each other. Sometimes a hut was burned. Any survivors would crawl off to a neighbor and beg to be taken in. They'd uh, hand over whatever they had left, any cows and pigs, any of the things they used to prod or hit each other, any pretty things or shiny things, and in return they'd be allowed to sleep in the cow shed and uh, eat the worst of the food. The king and his lads did best of all out of it. What's that funny hat? It came in with some poor dispossessed persons that arrived today. Hasn't got any horns on it. It's not a hero's hat. It's a king's hat, number two. They give it to me as a tribute. Real gold it is. Won't stop many spears, though. Or swords. <laughs> the king's growing wealth attracted enemies. Yes, they'd come in the night, thundering up on horseback, leaping the pig fences, scattering the livestock as the doors banged open and the king's warriors tumbled out of their mead halls. Then they'd stop and face each other, waving their prodders and shouting their lungs out. <laughs> Terrible threats! Things about their fathers and oh, their fathers' fathers, and even about their mothers. Things about justice and honor. Then they would fight. The king and his growing band won every time and took more tributes. Within a dozen years, there was nobody left strong enough to challenge them. I don't think you've got the nose quite right, Sculptor. Don't you think Sculptor's got nose wrong, don't? I think Sculptor's got nose wrong, King. I don't think nose is very well sculpted at all. <coughs> Great bogey. I must tell you, Dung, I've had a wonderful vision. I'm going to build a grand hall. One that's worthy of me and my kingdom. Grand sculptures and that. That's my dream, Dung. Oh, aye. Uh, but I'm not letting any of the local yobbos loose on it with their chisels. Oh. oh, no, no. We'll have to part with some brass and import some experts. So the king sent off to far distant realms for axemen, woodsmen and carpenters, for metalsmiths and gold workers, for masons, builders, carters and workers to build a magnificent mead hall. For weeks their uproar filled the days and nights, and from behind the vines and boulders, I watched it all. Great. 
Boogie, did you hear that boy? A desperate need of a shaper. No mistake. Tell me, boy. Is it a grand hall we're coming to? Yes, yes, a grand hall. This will be Hrothgar's kingdom, they speak of. We'll do well there. Lead me, boy. What have we got here, then? Ah, you're the singer. Shaper. Shaper, is it, then? Oh, well, come in. Bit of a shush, lads. Here's a real singer. Ah. Shush, then. Shush, then. Shush. Bitter shush, bitter. Shush. King wants a bit of shush. So, you're a singer, then. Shaper. We professionals say shaper. A professional in need of a job by the look. Not as much in need of a job as you are in need of a shaper. Well put, shaper. Well put. Well put, eh, Dom? Aye, well put. We'll give you a try then, eh, Unfer? Unfer there knows about singers, don't you, Unfer? <coughs> My lord, <coughs> noble warriors, I will sing you the song of the revenge of Wigleaf. Wiglaf. Wiglaf. I will sing of your noble and heroic king. King got his nose thump nose. <laughs> of your gallantly wounded king and his glorious victory. You meet all gatherers. King loved warriors, listen to the story of the things. See the king blessed warriors, prideful skirmishers, gather in the early winter rain. Listen, mouths glitter, eyes glisten, spears glitter. Listen! They listen as their king revives their former bitter anger. They pledge to give their very lives as we collapse proud Avengers. Honor the king. Honor will bring to the king. Honor is king. Their journey takes them to the place of Wiglaf's assignation. Their mission brings them face to face. With Satan's congregation. Swords clatter, mouths tighten, blood spatters, eyes brighten. Imagine! The day is done, the king has won, surviving bitter blows, and proudly bears the battle scars upon his the nose, honor the scar that it shows. Hail to the nose, hail to the king, death to the foes of the king. Oh, I hope 
What's all this then? Volcanoes! Dozens of them! Hey, just down there in the valley! Oh. Oh, great boogie! What did you do that for? To shut your bloody bell up. Oh. Or do you want to have them all up here then? What's up then on Firth? Foreigners down in Valley. Blood, bloody hell. Uh, uh, do you think it's an invasion? Mm, hard to tell. Well, uh, what do we do then? What we don't do is wait till they march up here and have our goods for garters. we better send out scouting party. Uh, good thinking, Unfair. Off you go then. All right, I thought that was coming. Being assistant scout is better than being number 11, isn't it? I mean, it's a real promotion, isn't it? Shut up. Oh, I. They look harmless enough. Hey, get our lads down here, Dung, and quick, man. Who's in charge here? I up. Who's in charge then? I am, old bean. Who are you? I am the noble hero, Unferth. Go on. And what seems to be the twabble? Have you heard of the great King Rothgar? Mm, no. No, I can't say that I This can. is his kingdom you're in, and I've come as his official representative with his official message, which is push off. I say, that's a bit wagged, isn't it? <laughs> we, we, we just wanted to have a bit of a west, yeah? Defying the king, are we? Oh, oh no, 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 not at all. I wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> How about some uh, tributes, <laughs> wings and uh, bracelets and twinkets like that? <laughs> How about a sword up the nose holes? <clears throat> if you regard us as a threat to you... Threat? <laughs> threat? <laughs> that's bloody unlikely. <laughs> Please, stop them. Aye, uh, up, oh, King. I think we can call lads off and, uh... Crikey! Hey, mad bear! It's a mad bear! Hey, kill it, with glass! Get it! Kill it there! The great boogie! Oh, stop them! Oh, look, look! Uh, stop them and, 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 and let us be and I will surrender a very special treasure to you! Uh, come and see. If you will let us go on our way, uh, I will give your king... My sister, to take as his bride. She will be a symbol of unity between my tribe and your tribe. Her name is Wealthyow, which means holy servant of common good. My lord. Christmas, he doesn't deserve it. My lord. I'm not your lord, more's a pity. No, oh, your lord is so... Right here, your lord is. I am your lord and sovereign and husband-to-be. Yup. Welcome to family, lass. I'm the king, and I'm royally pleased to accept your lovely gift, along with the golden that. On Firth, you go and chase lads back home. I say... What? Uh, uh, do, do you have a proper priest to, to preside at the ceremony? Eh? The marriage ceremony. We need a priest. Yes, ah, uh, of course. Dung. Dung here is our head priest. Yeah, another promotion. He's a priest? Uh, still in one day. Ah, uh, yes. Very spiritual, our Dung. Come on, then. Let's get on with it. So the old king accepted the young king's gift, along with some other things, swords and cups and servants and so on, and both sides made speeches, all long-winded, tediously poetic, mostly lies. And then, with a lot of handshaking and the last few touching observations, the foreigners went away. So, what do you want to do tonight, Grendel? Oh, uh, I don't know, Grendel. What do you want to do tonight? Well, I believe there's a good show at the Mead Hall. Splendid new singer. The Mead Hall, eh? Oh, oh you, uh, you wouldn't be thinking you might catch a look at that pretty new queen now. Oh, no, no, no. I, I just enjoy a good tune, that's all. Isn't that curious? I did enjoy that Shaper's tune. Imagine them conceiving something that I like. Well, I hadn't thought them capable of it. Tell me, Snake, have they changed, do you think? Or have I? Mind you, they murder each other, no less for it. Finish, shush. That's it. That's it. Tonight, we honor our new queen. Invested as such and married to me today by our new priest. Poets of the distant future, uh, like in the year 600, say, will sing of this, this historic day Marking, as it does, a new era of peace and prosperity 
for all. Yeah. And went with a worthy successor to continue my good work and and uh, and, and uphold my great ideals. Pretty well assured, eh, lads? <laughs> you know, son and heir, eh? <laughs> and, and, uh, oh, and the consolidation of my realm will be complete. Uh, now, uh, now I'd like to call upon the Shaper to sing a special song to mark the occasion. God saw the darkness and he made it right. God harmed the darkness in today and night. God saw the garden and he made it the garden into clay and flesh. God saw his image and he gave it life. God halved his image into man and wife. Man, wife united to create two sons. God halved his kingdom for the chosen ones. God's love was able to perpetuate. Cain halved his feelings into love and hate. God-fearing Abel loved his brother so. Cain halved his brother with a bitter blow. Cain bore the fury of both God and man. God halved his children into loved and damned. Now and forever, Beasts of Cain live halved from grace in foul black pits of pain. Halved us from grace? Us? Me? Am I one of the dark damned half? A child of this awful brother? But they are the ones who murder each other. Can I be... Friend? 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 I hope. What was all that, then? The, the, the great bogey. Hey, we cut him about a bit, though. <laughs> Reckon he won't be back, eh? Cut us about a bit, too, by the look. Who was on guard, then? Whose fault is it? Great bug, I mean, uh, uh, bloody hell. Where's your devotion to your king? Oh. Perhaps the fault is a lack of devotion to the king of the gods? Hey. Your new priest. Perhaps your frivolous appointment has, um, Made the king of the gods a bit upset with us? He's not the only one. What are you on about, Unferth? That speech in there about sons and heirs. Uh, I'm your successor, remember? No, oh, aye. That was, that was just for the last, Unferth. Aye. Uh, uh, you think this visit from the great Boogie is a sign that we're in trouble with the king of the gods, then? I believe I'm approximately right. I know something of such matters. I have studied... The runes. I can instruct your new priest. In the morning, we will appease the king of the gods. God have pity. God have pity. I yelled that a hundred times that night, hammering the ground in the middle of the forest where I had fled. 
slamming the ground so hard that her seam split open 12 feet long. Why hadn't they been able to understand that we could all live together? In the morning, I sat on a neighboring hill dabbing mud into my various cuts and wounds and watched them perform a funny ritual for the warriors I'd been obliged to kill. They threw up a tangled, terrible nest of sticks that wouldn't do justice to a feeble-minded crow, then tossed the bodies onto it. Oh, it's a dreadful waste of food. The shaper hummed and hard a bit, and then, as if in response to some signal, lit the bonfire. Red flame turned on blackening flesh, reaching up into greasy smoke that swallowed the sky. Then, according to some lunatic theory, they threw on golden rings, old swords, serviceable helmets, and chanted heroic catch cries as if they'd won some great battle. I laughed at myself. Had I really been all that anxious to be accepted by them? Midnight foolishness. I went home to my ugly, loving mother. That night, in the safety of my cave, I had a dream. Or perhaps, a journey. Ah, Grendel, you've come. We've been expecting you. Uh, stand around the side, boy. I get a cough sometimes and... Well, speak up, boy. Uh, say, hello there, Mr. Dragon. <laughs> and now you know how they felt when they saw you, eh? <laughs> Scared enough to be in their pants. You didn't, did you? Good. That's valuable stuff you're standing on. <laughs> Put that down. Don't touch. Never, never touch my things. You, you have a point about how they must feel when they see me. I mean, it's one thing to eat one of them from time to time. It keeps their numbers down for one thing. But it's quite another to give them heart attacks for no... Fiddlesticks. Pardon? Why not frighten them? Stupid, 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 the whole kit and caboodle. Why did you come here? Why bother me? Don't tell me I know. I know everything. That's what makes me so sick and old and tired. I'm sorry. I know you're sorry. I know everything. You're sorry right now for this one frail flicker flash in the long, dull fall to eternity. I'm not impressed. I'm sorry. Don't keep saying that. I know everything you see. The beginning, the present, the end, everything. You now. You know the past and the present, like other low creatures. No higher faculties than memory and perception. But we dragons, my boy, have a whole different kind of mind. We see how it will be. And not that we cause things to happen, you understand. No, no, we dragons don't mess with your piddling free will. No, we don't cause things. Anyone who argues otherwise is... Uh... Grendel, don't look so bored. Think how I must feel. I... I know you're sorry. I know. I know everything about you. I know why you were invented in the first place. <laughs> Do you know? Why? Ah. They're half right with their mumbo-jumbo. They've stumbled onto a half-truth. Good and evil, positive and negative. There's a fundamental involved here, Grendel. For everything that's cold, there's something hot. For everything that is, there's something else that's not. Light must have its darkness, good must have its bad. For everything subtracted, there's something else to add. For everyone who's rich, 
Another ten up pool For everyone who never was There's one who was before For every positive And negative is knocking at the door For every entertainer There's a bore Need I say more As if I could possibly stop you <laughs> For every entertainer For every entertainer For every entertainer, there's a bore. Bore, encore, encore. For everyone who fails, another will succeed. And every act of charity supplants an act of greed. For every deity, the laity is slaving at the yoke. And every hollow laugh demands a joke. Ha uh ha! -huh. For every answer, there's a question. Yes. To each exception, there's a rule. For every sound, a silence. For every sage, a fool. For everyone who's mean, another one is nice. For everyone who's virtuous, another's full of vice. For every synonym, an antonym is waiting round the bend. And every bright beginning has an end. Every bright beginning has an end. Everyone who's mean, another one is nice. For everyone who's virtuous, another's full of vice. For every synonym, an antonym is waiting round the bend. And every bright beginning has an end. Every bright beginning, every bright beginning, every bright beginning has an end. A splendid way of making the point, wouldn't you say, dear boy? Yes. What, what point? What point? The point, dear Grindle, is that you are man's anti-man. Piety's pie in the eye. Ignorance's bliss. In short, dear Grindle, you are here. You exist simply to go bump in their night. That's silly. Silly? Did you hear what the boy said? The dragon is silly. Silly, silly, silly. The shaper. Illusion, tripe, mere slate of wits. You are the reality. You will drive them to poetry, science, religion in their efforts to explain you. You want me to scare them to... It's not what I want. You'll do it anyway. Aren't you making me do it by telling me to? No, no, no. Dragons don't cause anything, I told you that. But if you hadn't told me... I had to tell you. I knew I would. I suppose that's right. Of course it is. And for everyone who's right, another one is... Left? Little do they know they're better for that. Oh, blind prejudice. Oh, the unfairness of everything. I've never killed a deer in my life. After all, cows have more meat. And they're easier to catch. like we've got more priests than heroes these days. Aye, the great boogies attracting them like flies. How do they expect a dead deer to do them any good? I remember when we used to do it properly. Sacrifice a couple of live virgins. Aye. Religion is sick these days. Oh, great boogie, what a smelly old boy. That, 
Oh, <laughs> oh, forgive me, my lord. I was unaware that... Uh... I'm not your lord. The king's your lord. He's your lord. He would have you with child and have me out. A fine way to treat a hero. He's your lord, not Unferth. Not Unferth? Uh, it's nothing. I meant nothing. When shall I sing the song of Unferth, then? Eh? Unferth means nothing. Unferth does nothing. If Unferth treads no step, there is no song. And what's that supposed to mean, then? Nothing. It also means nothing. Honor the nose, honor the scar that it shows. Hail to the nose, hail to the king, death to the foes of the king. Long live the It's back. I hope. Wiglaf spotted him. He's outside keeping an eye on him. Now we shall show the great boogie what we thanes are made of. A hero's battle in a king. You'll want to scourge him, I suppose. Oh, aye. I hope. Bloody hell. You were supposed to keep an eye on him, Wiglaf. Don't, don't worry, Wiglaf. Keep calm, lad. Foul monster, I am Unferth, son of Eglaf. Are you right with your god, or devil? For I am about to send you to him. Prepare for Christmas. Wiglaf? Oh! Eee, yucky, yuck. Why didn't you stop him, Unferth? Why didn't you stop him? Well, I couldn't resist it, really. There they were, smugly damning all their enemies to hell. I simply did what the dragon said I should, said I would, and gave them something to worry about. Mind you, I wish I'd taken his helmet off first. I think I've broken a tooth. That was the start of this silly business, this uh, war, they call it, that's been going on for a dozen years now. To stop them becoming too smug, I'd drop in from time to time and eat one or two. Why? <laughs> Who knows why? I hated the greedy little king, now becoming dottier by the year, doting on two really beastly children that the queen had borne him. I despised Unferth, the great hero, who clearly loved the queen, hated the king, and continued to issue pompous challenges, mostly to me, without ever being willing to act. I teased him by ignoring him and killing others who raised their swords to me with far less fury. I envied the Shaper his poetry, but despised his mystic meddling. It seemed to me that, uh, as the dragon would have it, I was following some natural law by giving them a challenge far above their petty domestic squabbles, shaking them up a bit during this uh, one frail flicker flash in the long, dull fall to eternity. <laughs> End quote. But I couldn't be sure, even now, as I made my way for the umpteenth time to their mead hall. Here I am, Grendel, wrecker of mead halls, ruiner of kings. Poor Grendel. Oh, oh, hey, hey, what, what do we do? King! Don't worry. I know what to do, even if you don't. Prepare to die. No longer will you murder men as you please in this hall. This one red hour makes your reputation or mine. Dread creature, foul monster. Prepare to... Hey! Wait! Oh, hey! Oh. Whoa. <laughs> 
So that's what you do then, eh? On further. <laughs> Thank you for the demonstration. <laughs> Very valuable, wasn't it, love? <laughs> I've not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> The shaper will sing that, that Unferth went down through the burning lake and gave his life in battle with the <coughs> great bogey. Know you that a hero stands here, unafraid to die. For mark me well, one of us will die this night. All a hero asks for is that he might die in a... Here, what's this then? It's all very well for you, then, making a fool of me in front of everyone. You don't understand that all a hero's got is his reputation. And where's mine now? Buried under all those bloody apples. Hey! Hi, look. Hey, hello. What's this, then? One, sir. One of your... Shut up. Talking to the sea now, then, are we? Why not? Why not? Some of us talk to the great bogey. Not very fruitfully at that. Shouldn't have mentioned fruit, should I? But, but perhaps I can do something about that monster. What's that, then? The sea on Earth. Trust our friend, the sea. It could be our salvation. Potty. He's gone completely potty. Potty old fool. No doubt you're wondering why I've called you all together here today. The 25, 6, 7. Yes. Today, dear friends, closest, only friends, today is my birthday. I'm so glad you could all come. We will have a party. On my first birthday, they said, Oh, what a big baby. On my fourth or fifth, they said I was very big for my age, but not to worry. After that, they gave up. And now I'm larger than anything else is. When they made me, they spared no expense. I'm bigger by half than a pig or a calf And even compared to a bear, I'm immense Oh, me Poor, poor me Too big for a comforting pat on the head Too big for a table, too big for a bed And I'm plainer than everyone else is. A star in your eye, dear beholder. My nails are a mess and my scales, I confess, are cracking and yellowing. 
as I grew older. Delighted to meet you. Uh, permit me to introduce myself, a Grindle. Wretched, hideous monster in person. The one and only at your service. Who is here? Is someone here? <laughs> this is sacred ground. Oh! <laughs> Uh, uh, the dragon god has fallen. The kingdom will follow. Oh. oh, the king will die. Now the king will die. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now it's all up to the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Just the sea, young father. Come on, King. It's snowing. Hmm? See? Snow. Come on back before you freeze to death. No, oh, I bother telling him, Barney, old booger. Oh, bloody hell. Snow in October. Don't trample that mud in. That's your Christmas. Me furs are all saturated. How is the ceremony, my lord? Oh, priests under your feet everywhere. Any lord you see one sacrifice, you've seen them all. He didn't even watch it. I caught him talking to the sea. The sea, Unferth. Trust the sea. What's that supposed to mean? Hot water! It probably means he doesn't think much of the help he gets around here, my lord. I'm not your lord. Shape of goodness. You look like something the cat dragged in. Not me. Your lord is that old goat who's losing his marbles. But one day, perhaps... 
one day very soon. What's that? Is that treason you're talking, Shaper? Treason? In some ears, your words might ring of it. My words? Listen, Shaper, a hero is loyal, devoted. Portents. Listen, I speak of signs, portents of the event. Sounds like you're planning something. No, 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 The signs. What signs? The great boogie is a sign. The early snow is a sign. But there is something else. Just now, at the sacred circle, the dragon god, the king's own sign, fell to the ground. The king will fall on earth. And we will need a strong leader to protect us all. How will the king fall? Who knows? Perhaps the great booby, or perhaps to appease the dragon god, we should. We? When the king is dead on first, you will protect us. Hush, you hot court! Bring me a bucket of hot water for me feet! Do you uh, think he heard us? They'll keep. Shape, huh? Well, what's that horrible noise you're making? It's the young princes, my lord. They've taken our instruments and they won't give them back. Ah. And boys will be boys. Do you think they have talent yet? Very... experimental. Bloody loud, too. Come on, give the shaper his things back, darlings, and he'll sing us all a lovely song. Aye. Now, uh, what would you like a song about, eh? Ah, shaper! <laughs> we want a song about the monster! <laughs> Grindel, the great boogie! We know a lovely monster who often comes to call. We eagerly anticipate his visits to our hall. Oh, oh his visits to our hall. I hope. What's all this lovely monster talk? I expect the reference is ironic, my lord. Oh. An amicable monster, beloved of one and all. We listen as his gentle tap demolishes the wall. Oh. Oh, demolishes the wall. What's ironic? Irony is the conveyance of meaning by words whose literal meaning is the opposite of what is actually meant. Oh. An entertaining monster, an asset at a ball. He rumbles quite adroitly with a tendency to maul, though a tendency to maul. He's too clever for his own good, that shaper. A gentlemanly monster, perhaps a trifle tall. Removal of a foot or two may benefit us all. Oh, oh, oh may benefit us all. An ambidextrous monster whose claws are none too small. Removal of an arm or two might benefit us all. Oh, may benefit us all. Removal of a friend or two might help an all. We know a lovely monster who often comes to call. Removal of his apples <laughs> might benefit us all. Oh, might benefit us all. Have an apple on first. Yes, have an apple on first. Frightening innocent little children. There, there. Did the nasty unfirth frighten me, little lads? Don't worry, darlings. Daddy will fix him up. You'll see. Good night, sweetheart.
monster. She's done nothing. Your quarrel is with me and the king. Kill us now. You're going to do it one day. Get it over with. What are you doing here? What do you mean, what am I doing here? I thought you knew everything. Yes. Well, of course I do, but not when I'm asleep, which I was. Well? Well, what? What am I doing here? All pigs eat cheese. The king is a pig. Do pigs eat kings or something? Games, my boy, games, games, games. No total vision, no total system. Merely vague schemes with a vague family resemblance. Oh, is that why I'm here? You must have something to do with it. Why do you think you're here? I want to ask you a question. Exactly. I know you do. Okay, sweetheart. Go ahead and ask. Did you say that I will kill the king? Did I say that? Did I say that? Let me see. What year is this? 515 by the Christian calendar. Which do the Buddhists is... Just uh, tell me, will I kill him? Temper? That's not what you asked me. You asked if I had said that. It's so difficult to remember what I've said or I'm about to say. You see, I wouldn't want to make a mistake now, would I? I... I know. You're sorry. No. I think for someone who knows everything, you don't tell anybody very much. Now, answer your own bloody questions, then. I am sorry. So you should be. Well? Well, what? Well, what about the king? Ah, yes. Inevitable. The whole thing. Did you know, Grendel, that my death is inevitable? A certain man will kill me absurdly. A terrible pity. Loss of a remarkable form of life. Conservationists will howl. And you, now, you deserve a riddle. We dragons are very fond of riddles. <clears throat> um, uh, when the white wolf flies, with the help of Grendel's good right arm, a new lord will rule. <laughs> That's a good one. Grendel's good right arm. <laughs> riddle, stupid old goat. All you want is a simple answer to a simple question, and all you get is abuse and riddles. When the white wolf flies, indeed. Well, I think dragons are very much overrated. I've seen him looking better. You won't be seeing him looking any worse. <gasps> Must have been something to eat. Hey, here's a funny thing, King. What do you want, Dung? This is a solemn moment you're interrupting. Ah, oh, sorry, King. It's just about this ship. Ship? Ah, look out came in. Says there's a funny-looking ship down at coast. What kind of ship? Ooh, foreign one, he reckons. Big white wolf on sail and all. Mm. Good. He's come, then. Good. Get this place cleaned up. Get a feast organized. We're about to have company. What company? The son of Ed Gettle. Grandson of Bethel. Great grandson of Swerting. Beowulf, the king of the gates, that's who. It's double Dutch to me. Get the door open. Beowulf! Beowulf, my boy! It was good of you to come! Yes, yes, it was. Ah, uh, yes. I'm King Rothgar. I knew your father. Rothgar. Yes, I believe he mentioned you. Won't, won't you and your, uh, 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 
warriors, uh, come into our humble hall. Yes, oh yes, indeed we will. But it's not all that humble, surely. Oh, well, no, Nothing I, like uh, the splendor of my own palace, to be sure, but comfortable, wouldn't you say? Uh, Ah, charming. Yes, indeed, charming, Provincia. Well, uh, ah, my dear old fellow, some food would be appreciated. Please tell the chef not to go to any trouble. Something simple for me and some raw meat for my noble companions. Uh, but forgive me, I haven't introduced them, have I? May I present Graf? Grim, Shaggy Arthur, Pig Fat, Shabby, Blood Axe, Coal Eater, Bog the Short, Tall, Don't Do That Tall, and of course, Troll. <laughs> what have you done? Who is that? That's Beowulf, the famous hero. I knew his father. What's he want? I asked him to come here to kill the great bogey. You barmy old coot. You can see he's a lunatic. Don't do that, Tor. And those subhumans he's got with him are likely to kill us all. He's famous. I can look after great bogey. We don't need outsiders poking their noses. You've in. been looking after the great bogey a bit too much, and vice versa. Get rid of him. I'm king here on Firth, not you. Some music would be pleasant. I always say it helps the digestion. Do you employ minstrels? Of course we do. We've got a shaper. The, uh, shaper's not very well, Lord Firth. Eh? No. Uh, as a matter of fact, he's dead. Dead? That's right. Why don't you run and fetch his boy? You run and fetch him. And you, you best be off before our monster shows up. He'd have you for afternoon tea. Very amusing. He's twelve foot high and green and airy. Horrible claws and fangs. He bites heads off. My dear cousin, monsters are my business. Not to put too fine a point on it, big, horrible, hairy ones are just my cup of tea. Speaking of which, need of sorts, is it? Extraordinary. Troll? <laughs> Troll? Fetch us a cask of the 93, dear boy. Oh, luncheon. Let us all sit down and enjoy a charming, rustic meal. Uh, Robgar. Robgar. Yes, of course. You sit here, perhaps. My companions, I see, have made their own arrangements, and I shall sit here by the door to protect you all from monsters. God protects us from monsters. Ah, then it seems you must be falling down on the job, eh? Not to worry. I'm here now to help him out. Heresy! I always say never discuss religion or politics over dinner. Bad for the digestion. If the monster claims lives, it's God's will. You speak heresy! Heresy is determined by which end of the sword you're at. Now, don't be boring, or I might have to sort a few of you out. The old wolf's good at that, sorting out the troublemakers. Hello. Who have we here? This is me better off, the first lady of the realm. Well, well, what a lucky fellow you are to be sure, Hobgar. Rothgar. What is your name, dear heart? I'm called Wealthiau. It means servant of common good. I'd say uncommonly good. The old boy really doesn't deserve you, you know. He doesn't deserve her, you know, Mum. And she has such a desperate existence in that place with that foolish old man. Perhaps that's why the dragon says I'll kill him one day. You, you did say I'd kill him, didn't you? Yeah, that's what it seemed like you said. What's a flying white wolf? The early snow? Yeah, it's snowing out there already, Mum. Perhaps I can bring her winter to an end. Kill the king. Bring her home. Here. A new lord will rule. Well, that's what you said, dragon. Would she be better off with me as her new lord? Well, she couldn't be worse off anyway. Do you fancy a daughter-in-law, mother? Yeah, she's inclined to scream a lot. The moon's rising. Arising on the great boogie's final evening. You think he'll come? If he does, the trap is set. Now we bait it and wait. Oh. Uh, music, Hobbyer. Let's have some sounds of everyday activity. <laughs> Final evening in the world he shares 
with you and me The monster The great boogie doesn't know that he Is walking to eternity For Beowulf has told us so And Beowulf must surely know We will no more live in dread as formerly. So swell, G R E N D E L. What's his purpose? Can't you guess? N E M E S I S. For Beowulf is hard as nails, and as we know, he never fails. Surround our home. They soon will show the blood red traces of his final paces as he leaves us all. For Beowulf would have it so. And so it must be exactly deadly so And so it must be And so it will be QED Exactly deadly so
a silly accident. Mama! Mama! Oh, if I hadn't just walked in like that. Who was that? Lucky for him, I didn't know he was there. Unlucky for me, however. Well, I wouldn't have just walked in like that, would I? Oh, Mama! An accident. Grendel, 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 your mother loves you, Grendel, lying there, all twelve feet four. Every scale, every tooth, nail, fang, and claw of you. Thank <laughs> you.